Hello, and welcome to How to Hook and Engage Audiences on Social Media, an introductory science communication workshop. This workshop is part of a series on social media communications created with support from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research and the Pacific Institute on Pathogens, Pandemics, and Society. To access other workshops in this series, please visit youtube.com forward slash at PIPPSBC. Simon Fraser University respectfully acknowledges the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Katsi, Kwikwetlam, Kakite, Kwaslin, Semiamu, and Swasan peoples on whose unceded traditional territories our three campuses reside. The person you are hearing present right now is Rakib Tesve, that's me. In the photo, I don't usually have a plant attached to me, unfortunately, but in brief, I'm a researcher and science communicator. I completed my PhD in neuroscience at McGill University. I've primarily engaged audiences using audio, most recently as a science columnist for CBC Radio. But I've worked with various communities and organizations in different capacities to build a more inclusive and accessible science communication landscape. If you wanna find out more about me, you can check out rakibtesfay.com. And if you have any questions about this current workshop, you can reach me at rakib.tesfay at mail.mcgill.ca. But enough about me. Let's talk about why we should be engaging people with science information on social media. Canada is one of the most connected countries in the world. According to a recent report by the Toronto Metropolitan University, 94% of Canadians that they poll to access the internet have at least one social media account. At least one. Those are a lot of Canadians online. Over the past few years, we have seen an increasing number of researchers, practitioners, institutions, and government agencies on social media, using it to share recent studies or for health promotion, for instance. During COVID-19, we watched in real time as people all over the world flocked to social media to stay safe and updated. In fact, government leaders globally gained followers on social media during the beginning of the pandemic compared to periods before it. In addition to its recreational and promotional function, social media is emerging as a necessary tool for risk communication and public health. This makes the case that we as science communicators have a duty to be on social media. But how do we compete with the oversaturation of information online? According to the World Health Organization, we are facing an infodemic. So how can we get the right message to the right audience? Well, by the end of this workshop, I hope <laughs> you will be able to define who and who your audience is and why they care about your content. You'll be able to clearly identify appropriate social media platforms and features, recognize elements of a strong hook to attract your audience, list strategies for effective and sustained audience engagement, and finally, reflect on social media pitfalls and hopefully avoid them. Now, the first step to engaging your audience, regardless of the platform, is knowing who they are and why they care about your content. This may seem simple, but it is often where people are too broad or have too many messages, which is overwhelming. You need to be able to write down your main message in one short sentence. With your target audience, you want to specify who your primary audience is. Now, sometimes it is a general audience. And while I don't frown on that as much as some of my other colleagues, by going general, it means your message may not resonate with as many people as it could, and your dissemination strategy won't be as clear cut. So try to be specific. Next, you need to know why your audience cares about your content. If there isn't a good reason or a compelling one, they'll get hooked by something else. 
And very important, what is your main outcome of success? You need to be specific. Is it getting your audience to click on a link or to watch a video or to register for something? This is, imp this is important for strategically crafting your post. For our first activity, you are a social media manager and you have been given a summary of a report which you'll need to create a social media post about. I'd like you to read the summary on the left. Then write down your main message, what your main message is for your audience, who your target audience is, why they care, and what main outcome you expect to result from this post. And so for each of these, you must write one short sentence. You can pause the video here. When you post about a study or a new finding, you often have a lot of competing information. Being able to distill this is key. In this case, a clear main message is ticks are on the rise. Learn how to avoid them, period. Very simple. My target audience, yes, it could be general, as the report mentions all ages, but again, try to be specific. Here I wrote people going camping because the report mentions national parks opening soon. This population who are at high risk for encountering ticks while sleeping outdoors can be more manageable to target. At least for the first post, we can try different audiences later. Your audience cares because, well, they'll be at risk for tick-borne illnesses while enjoying the outdoors. Again, very straightforward. And for a primary outcome, you want your audience to learn about preventative tick measures by, and here's where you can choose your action. So by clicking a website link or by reading the infographic you posted, some type of action. Okay, great job. So next, you have a message and target audience. Now you got to find them on social media. There are many platforms and new ones keep popping up. According to the latest state of social media report, online Canadian adults are mostly on Facebook, followed by messaging apps, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Interestingly, since 2020, TikTok has emerged as the fastest growing social media platform and is ideal for reaching a younger audience. But at the time of this recording, it has been banned on government owned devices. So uh, we're gonna pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> Uh, instead, we're going to focus on three of the most popular social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll leave YouTube for another time as videos are a whole other workshop. And I hope by the time of this recording, uh, Twitter is still alive. <laughs> they, these are some confusing and uh, unpredictable times for Twitter. Okay, globally, Facebook has the most monthly users, and in Canada, it is strongly adopted among a wide range of 25 to 44 year olds. Uh, it is also the platform where you'll find the most adults above 45. Um, it also appears to be the most diverse in terms of income and education level. Instagram in Canada is popular among a younger age group, so 18 to 24 years old. Twitter is as well, but it, it does have uh, more older adults using the platform compared to Instagram. So knowing this information, we're going to start a second activity. So based on the audience presented on the slide, I'd like you to suggest what social media platform would be ideal for engaging them. You can pause here if you'd like. Okay, so people of all ages like to go camping. So any platform seems relevant. College students tend to be between 18 to 22 years of age. Instagram would be a suitable platform. 
Uh, you could also do Twitter, but as I mentioned, it has more older users. And lastly, older adults, well, it's got to be Facebook. For the main post formats, all platforms give you the option of accompanying text with visuals, photos, or video. But this is only mandatory on Instagram, where you must have a visual. You have character limits on each social media platform. So Facebook is the longest with 63,000 characters, over 63,000 characters. Um, but using all characters on either platform is very, very advised against. In fact, you can see that both Facebook and Instagram truncates posts. For Instagram, it cuts off at 125 characters. And for Facebook, it depends on the type of phone you have, but it's between 130 and 162 characters. Here's an example of the April Fool's edition of Scientific American, or should say Merca. You can see the same post cuts off at different points on Instagram on the left and Facebook on the right. Uh, and both platforms makes the audience choose if they want to see more of the post. This non-truncated text is prime real estate because this is where you hook your audience. Journalist and nonfiction writer, William Zinser wrote the most important sentence in any article is the first one. If it doesn't induce the reader to proceed to the second sentence, your article is dead. So this is similar for social media posts. Uh, it's applicable to many mediums, like radio as well. Um, for news articles, the first sentence or two very short ones is called the lead. And this is your hook. And they are typically no more than 35 words. These words need to entice your reader. And we follow similar rules of brevity on social media. One type of lead commonly used uh, in news media is uh, the direct lead. So direct leads use the framework of the inverted pyramid. This is often applied in science journalism and engagement. So instead of using an academic article structure where you have the background methods and results, we flip this and we get to the bottom line first, the results, the conclusion of a study. So on the right, here's a tweet from the World Health Organization African region that says, the data is clear. Mothers can get vaccinated against hashtag COVID-19 virus whilst breastfeeding. Very direct, short, simple, clear, bottom line. Now there are other creative strategies uh, that are often used to hook audiences. Uh, including asking a question. So would you consider composting your body in the future? It's a great hook, really makes you stop and think. On the right, the Facebook post uh, is promoting a Science Friday Friday radio, work, uh, radio episode um, that starts with introducing us to a character. All this used to be the lake, said Perry gesturing out to the vast expanse of land in front of him. Uh, what happened to the lake? Who is Perry? We are attracted to human stories, and this has intrigue. It leaves us hanging and wanting to find more. I came across a recent tweet uh, below from an environmental scientist describing a popular figure from the new IPCC report, uh, and they reframe it in a personal way, writing, the bottom panel is my parents, the middle one is me, the top one is my children. It invites the reader 
to contextualize this figure to their own lives, which is very powerful. Now for our third activity, let's create our own hooks. Hooks are notoriously hard to write, so it's helpful to just get something down on the page to work with. Give yourself 60 seconds to write as many hooks as you can. Don't worry about how good they are. Just try to get at least one strategy down. So if you have a post you're working on, that's great. Um, if not, you can use the tick prevention audience message you already create, created earlier in the workshop. You can pause the video here. So I joined in two. Here are a few hooks I came up with. Um, they're not uh, Pulitzer, uh, you know, award worthy, but they get the job done. Uh, and I find it's always helpful starting with a direct lead, like my first hook. So you've got your audience hooked. How can the rest of your post be effective and sustain engagement? I break it down into five strategies to be mindful of, and we'll go through each. So for your content, some best practices, and, and by no means is this an exhaustive list, um, just like your hook, try to keep your point simple and short. Give the audience an action. The audience needs to feel involved and have agency to make some type of choice, like clicking a link. Try to make your post as if you were sitting beside someone telling them about your message. Make it conversational. And this is, this is a big one. Try to always use visuals. Emojis, a photo, infographics, something. Researchers have found that public health social media posts with visual cues get more engagements compared to posts without. And one study found infographics were more likely to be engaged with on social media during the pandemic compared to other visuals. And this is something to keep in mind when you're explaining complex topics. And a reminder, when you're using visual posts, please use video captions um, and alt text for inclusion and accessibility. Okay. There are many different stylistic techniques you can use to engage audiences with your context. A few of the common ones include using similes, metaphors, varying, your sentence lengths uh, and creating space for the eyes. For instance, you want a hook, uh, if you want, for instance, sorry, if, if you want to, uh, your hook to stand out from the rest of the paragraph, um, it's really helpful to have that space. Using humor, of course, this depends on the topic, but if done well, it really is effective. Remember to use statistics wisely. If they aren't jarring or easy to understand, you'll lose the reader. It goes without saying, no one has time to pull out a dictionary. No jargon. So these are a lot of suggestions, suggestions that I've just made. Let's look at some examples. So one of the best social media communicators in Canada is Science Sam, Dr. Samantha Yamin. And toward the beginning of the pandemic, she posted this video on Facebook, starting with a question. Why does science on COVID-19 keep changing? This is a great hook because it captures what many people were frustrated with. She gives us space to read the rest of the post and starts a conversation, inviting us to take an action, watch a video, and let's chat. In the video, she uses a visual simile, explaining how scientific process, how the scientific process is like guessing a puzzle before it's done. So chef's kisses, 
this post is ticking off a lot of these boxes here, um, which is usual for Science Sam. So if you want inspiration, I would check out uh, all of her social media platforms. The checklist uh, New York Times on Twitter gives us a direct lead. Some plants make popping noises when they're thirsty or being pruned, scientists found. Take a listen. It's an easy action. And then they use a really visually appealing photo that acts as another hook using a play on a, on, on a song, not play on words, but play on a song. So try reading this is what it sounds like when plants cry without having princes. This is what it sounds like when doves cry. Um, it's very hard. And I've had this song stuck in my head all day. So effective post. This is a Twitter thread from Science Up, Science Up First, uh, who did a great workshop on misinformation for this series. If you haven't already seen it, please do. So great hook. There's space, there's inviting conversation. I want to highlight here that there's an action to read a thread. So a thread is like a Twitter book, uh, multiple tweets in succession. A best practice is it's often to alert the audience that this is a thread. So we're not trapping them, we're just letting them know, hey, you're about to read a thread. There's an emoji thread, uh, a thread emoji that they've placed there. And this is how many tweets you're going to read. So we can see that there's one of six, that we're on reading one of six rather, and that there are going to be six tweets in this thread. Now, one of my uh, favorite science social media accounts to follow is at genome.gov or at genome underscore gov. Uh, this is the National Human Genome Research Institute, and they do a really wonderful job of using memes, humor, and cultural reference cultural references, all while educating and talking about difficult, complex issues. So I would highly recommend uh, checking them out for some inspiration as well. For sustained engagement, we can't just throw information at people. We need to reciprocate engagement. Respond to audience questions. Many science and public health accounts rarely do this, um, but it promotes science dialogue. You need to research your audience. For instance, what hashtags are they using? Maybe you can use hashtags to engage them. Have you tried liking their posts that are relevant to your content, commenting on them, or even sharing them? This will widen your reach. As you can see, there are many interactive features you can use to engage your audience across social media platforms. This includes polling or hosting a live Q&A. It's important to establish trust and, sor and, and source credibility with audiences. We're not chat GPT. Audience are receptive when we humanize our social media. So maybe send a selfie of your team, post non-scientific content sometimes. You can also invite other figures who are respected to collaborate with you or amplify their voices. Ottawa Public Health uh, is another account that has engaged audiences really well. Um, so I would highly recommend uh, uh, checking out their social media accounts as well. This particular post um, here, I thought was a really wonderful example. So this is Casey with a really cute child. Um, and they write, this is Casey. They recently had their first baby and are looking for resources to support themselves and their family during the first few months after birth. They found a network of parents on the Parenting in Ottawa social media pages, and they regularly check in to ask questions directly to nurses without having to worry about wait times at a walk-in clinic. 
sharing voices in the community that people can connect to and amplifying existing resources. I mean, this is a really, really great um, example of using uh, or thinking about identity and bi-directional engagement. And the only thing I would add here is um, it would be helpful to add a link to parenting in Ottawa social media pages, or maybe even share a common hashtag. But this is really um, such a wonderful post. And you can see in the comments how much this resonates with the audience. Um, one of one of the audience or the, the comments that was made was very cool to see inclusion of parents who are they's. Thank you. This is the first time I've seen myself in public health institutions parenting messages, parenting messaging. Um, so it's really, really important to be sharing and amplifying voices and stories um, on your social media. Another strategy to remember is timing. Be consistent. Post regularly or at similar times. Be relevant. Ottawa Public Health again. Uh, this is a social media post reminding us we love cute dogs, uh, but not to touch them while traveling. Um, and this was sent during March break, very relevant. And the last uh, strategy is to evaluate your engagement. Test new strategies, don't be afraid, ask for feedback and monitor your engagement. There are basic analytics that you can get on each platform and you can use companies depending on your resources. But uh, if you look, at the column, uh, the last column on, the, on your far right, uh, how many people are liking, commenting, clicking on the links, saving your Instagram posts or your uh, bookmarking your, your Twitter posts? Um, these are easily accessible engagement outcomes that you can look to evaluate and, uh, and, and then reevaluate your strategy. And the last learning objective are social media pitfalls to reflect on. So first, there is bias on social media. We tend to reach people seeking this information who are like-minded, who are highly educated, who have higher incomes. So many diverse audiences are being neglected. Reflect on how you are trying to communicate to individuals and communities that are not often prioritized or that are not on social media platforms. Second, you can't get away from misinformation on social media, but you can be part of the solution. I'd highly recommend watching Science Up First workshop on misinformation, on how to interact with it. We're seeing some preliminary research that shows audience Audiences want more posts about clarification, and that is currently lacking um, from health agencies uh, and other science uh, social media platforms. Lastly, there's very little research on social media and science communication. So we are borrowing from other fields like advertising and media, which is great. But as we build capacity for this research, keep an eye out for evidence-based strategies because this field changes really quickly. So with that, at the end of this workshop, I hope that you can now define your who and your why, identify appropriate social media platforms and features, recognize elements of a strong hook, list strategies for effective and sustained audience engagement, and reflect on social media pitfalls. Here are some references, resources, and readings that you can access. Uh, and I would really highly recommend uh, reading those additional uh, resources at the end there. So thank you for participating. This workshop was created by me, Rakib, in collaboration with the Pacific Institute on Pathogens, Pandemics, and Society. And we gratefully acknowledge funding for this workshop provided 
by CIHR and the Pacific Institute on Pathogens, Pandemics, and Society, PIPS. This workshop is part of a series on social media communications created with support from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research and the Pacific Institute on Pathogens, Pandemics, and Society. To access other workshops in this series, you can visit at PIPPSBC's YouTube page. If you have any comments or questions, you can reach us at smbc at sfu.ca or follow us on Twitter at PIPPSBC.